Imagine stumbling upon a lost world, an island untouched by time, where tiny humans once lived alongside giant lizards, dwarf elephants, and other strange creatures. In 2003, deep inside a limestone cave on the Indonesian island of Flores, scientists unearthed the remains of a species that defied all expectations. A human relative standing barely over a meter tall, with a brain smaller than a chimpanzee's, yet possessing the intelligence and skill to craft tools and hunt prey. This is the astonishing story of Homo floresiensis, or as some call them, the real-life hobbits of human evolution. In 2003, a team of archaeologists exploring Liang Bua Cave in Flores made a discovery that shook the scientific world, a nearly complete skeleton of a tiny hominin species, unlike anything seen before. The skeleton, labeled LB1, belonged to an adult female who stood just 106 centimeters, or three and a half feet tall, with a brain volume of only 380 cubic centimeters, about a third the size of a modern human brain. Yet despite its small size, evidence suggested that Homo floresiensis was a toolmaker, a hunter, and a survivor in a land filled with predators. But the surprises didn't stop there. Excavations revealed that these small humans lived on floors for tens of thousands of years, with evidence suggesting they might have coexisted with Homo sapiens as recently as 50,000 years ago. The controversy surrounding Homo floresiensis erupted immediately. Some scientists argued that the remains belonged to a modern human with microcephaly, a condition that causes reduced brain size. But further studies of the skull and skeleton showed that these tiny humans had unique anatomical traits, more primitive than any known modern human. Their long arms, short legs, and unusual wrist bones resembled much older hominins, suggesting they were not simply a deformed version of us, but something entirely different, possibly a remnant of an ancient human lineage that had survived in isolation for millennia. To understand how Homo floresiensis lived, we need to look at their environment. Flores was an isolated island, cut off from mainland Asia for over a million years. Life on such islands often leads to a phenomenon known as island dwarfism, where large species shrink in size due to limited resources, while smaller species grow larger due to a lack of predators. On Flores, this rule applied to both animals and humans. Homo floresiensis shared their world with Komodo dragons, giant storks, and Stegodon, dwarf relatives of elephants. They had to be resourceful to survive. Fossilized bones and stone tools found at the site suggest they were skilled hunters, likely using fire and crafted weapons to kill Stegodon calves and other prey. Imagine a group of these tiny hunters working together to take down a creature much larger than themselves. An incredible display of intelligence and cooperation. But how did they get to Flores in the first place? Some researchers believe their ancestors, possibly an early form of Homo erectus, arrived on the island over a million years ago, perhaps by accident, swept out to sea on natural rafts of vegetation during a storm. Over time, they adapted to their isolated environment, shrinking in size while retaining key survival skills. If this is true, it means Homo floresiensis represents a completely unique branch of human evolution, surviving far longer than anyone expected. If Homo floresiensis lived until 50,000 years ago, what caused their extinction? One possibility is climate change. Shifts in the environment could have made resources scarce, leading to their gradual decline. But there's another, more unsettling theory. What if their disappearance was linked to the arrival of Homo sapiens? Modern humans reached Southeast Asia around the same time that Homo floresiensis disappeared. Could our ancestors have wiped them out, either through direct conflict or by outcompeting them for food and resources? Some scientists believe that early human expansion led to the extinction of multiple hominin species, including Neanderthals and Denisovans. If so, Homo floresiensis might have been one of the last casualties of this process. 
But here's where things get even stranger. Local legends among the indigenous people of Flores tell of the Ebu Gogo, a race of small, hairy beings that lived in the forests and stole food from villages. According to folklore, these creatures existed until just a few hundred years ago before disappearing completely. Could these stories be echoes of real-life encounters between Homo sapiens and the last surviving Homo floresiensis? The discovery of Homo floresiensis forces us to rethink the way we view human evolution. For decades, we believed that Homo sapiens were the dominant and sole surviving human species. But now, we know that multiple human species coexisted for thousands of years. If tiny small-brained humans like Homo floresiensis could survive for so long, who's to say there aren't other unknown branches of humanity waiting to be discovered? Genetic testing of Homo floresiensis has so far been unsuccessful due to poor DNA preservation in the tropical climate, leaving many questions unanswered. Could they have interbred with modern humans? Do traces of their lineage survive in the DNA of certain populations today? Until we find more fossils or successfully extract ancient DNA, the mystery remains unsolved. The existence of Homo floresiensis challenges the long-held belief that intelligence and brain size are the defining traits of human success. Despite their small brains, they made tools, hunted prey, and survived in an unforgiving environment for tens of thousands of years. This raises an intriguing question. What if intelligence comes in many forms? Could there have been other lost human species just as capable, but different from us, in ways we've never imagined? And if Homo floresiensis survived until 50,000 years ago, could there be other lost human species that lasted even longer? Could unknown hominins have lived alongside modern humans in remote parts of the world? Some researchers even speculate that unverified legends of wild humanoid creatures, like the Orang Pendic of Sumatra, might have roots in real but undiscovered species. The story of Homo floresiensis is far from over. More discoveries on Flores and other islands in Southeast Asia could reveal an even richer and more complex history of human evolution than we ever imagined. Perhaps the true nature of our past is one of diversity, where multiple intelligent human species once thrived together before only one remained. So, what do you think? Were the hobbits of Flores a lost cousin of ours, or something even more mysterious? If you've made it this far, you're among the rare explorers who seek the truth about our ancient past. But did you know that 99% of our viewers aren't subscribed? If you love unraveling the mysteries of human history, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Let's uncover history together.